sketch the polar curve, r theta equals sine of three theta from theta equals zero to theta equals pi. Once you have the sketch, find the area between the origin and the curve from theta equals zero to theta equal to pi over three. First, we wanna sketch a polar curve. So here I have a polar function, r theta equals sine of three theta. So what happens? We put an angle theta in, a radius comes out. How do we plot those points? Well, we look at our unit circle, we find our angle, I draw the line that joins the point on the unit circle to the origin. If our radius is positive, then I just measure out from the origin along the line on the same side as the angle. Okay, that point on the line for that radius is gonna be our point in the plane. If R is negative, then I just find that same point and then flip it through the origin. Now, let's look at our function, R theta equals sine of three theta. So it's tempting to put in the angles zero pi halves, pi three pi halves. If you do that, we're gonna miss a lot of detail. So instead, I wanna take those nice angles and divide by three. So we'll have zero, pi halves divided by three gives me pi six, pi divided by three gives me pi thirds, three pi halves divided by three gives me pi halves, and so on. What this guarantees is, when we take these angles, multiply by three, we're gonna be putting the good angles into sine. So you'll note what comes out are all gonna be these zero, ones, and minus ones, which are nice. Now if we want more detail, then we have to pick some angles that fit in between these angles. So let's try multiples of pi fourths. So we'll take them, divide by three, and then they'll give us some more points to connect the dots with. So for instance, take pi fourths, divide by three, gives me square root of two over two, and I get a point seven. Take three pi fourths, divide by three, it's gonna give me pi fourths, and again, square root of two over two, we get a point seven, and then so on. Now we plot those points. So we'll only do a few just to get an idea of what's happening. So first point up, zero comma zero. So if I go angle zero, radius of zero puts me at the origin. Next angle up is pi 12th with a radius of 0.7. So we find our pi 12s, go out by 0.7, that's that point there. Okay, the circle is the unit circle, and I know the entire curve is gonna live inside the unit circle because sine is always between minus one and one, so our radius always between minus one and one. Now, let's go for a negative one. So if you'll note, if we put in pi halves, a minus one comes out. So pi halves is the angle up here, but we have r equals minus one, so that means go up along pi halves to get to one and then flip through the origin, which brings me down here. So you'll note five pi twelfths, seven pi twelfths. These are also gonna be angles that are up here, but because we have negative radii coming out, okay, negative values of the function, we're gonna have our points down below the x-axis. Okay, so now plot enough of these points, connect the dots, you're gonna get the rows with three paddles. Okay, next part. Let's find the area of the first paddle. So that's gonna be between theta equals zero, theta equal to pi over three. So we write down our formula for the area when we have a polar function. It's gonna be A equals one half, okay, angle one to angle two, we're gonna take definite integral, that's gonna be of r squared d theta. So where does our formula come from? Well, let's think about the element that we're gonna sum over when we do our limit process. So if I'm looking at polar coordinates, okay, our variable's theta, so we're looking at how the angle changes. So if I have an angle changing, that's just gonna be a little sliver like I have in the picture. So in the picture, what do we have? We're gonna have this tiny angle, which I call d theta. We're gonna go out by the radius r, so I mark off the r in the bottom part, and then you'll note, well, what's the length of this arc here? That's just gonna be the radius times the angle. So that's r d theta. If 
you notice, this thing almost looks like a triangle. Since I'm doing a limit process, almost is good enough. So we're gonna take the area of that triangle, that's one half r times r d theta, okay, one half r squared d theta, put that through our limit process. That's gonna turn into our area formula. Okay, that's just gonna be, take your integral between your angles, one half r squared d theta. Okay, so let's put our r in. So that's sine of three theta. Okay, we're gonna square that. And now I wanna know how do I do the definite integral for this. So for sine squared three theta, okay, as it is, we can't work with it. But if we pull out a trig identity, things will go right through. So the trig identity I use is gonna be our double angle formula. So what's that say? If I have sine squared, okay, that's gonna be equal to one half minus cosine twice your angle over two. Okay, we get that from the double angle formula for cosine. That's just gonna be one minus two sine squared of your angle. And then you could just do the algebra to get the sine squared by itself. So I want this definite integral now, and now things are good. Okay, the one half goes to one half theta, cosine of six theta, any derivative is sine, and then I divide by the six. So that gives me 1 12th sine of six theta. We put in our pi thirds and our zero. Well, that's gonna give me sine of two pi and sine of zero. They both go to zero, so that goes away. So I'm just gonna have my theta pi over three, the only thing that contributes here. So I wind up with pi over 12. 